we're going to take a look at some fundamental properties that uh, all graphs basically have. Now, a few of these ideas we've seen in the past, but we want to put them all together so we can, when we look at a graph, we can kind of uh, interpret what's going on with it. A few of the things that we may have seen in the past are things like domain or range. Well, the definition that we've had from domain in the past is the values you are allowed uh, to plug into the function, and the range are the values that can come out of the function. So that was kind of our idea for domain and range. Uh, domain's the values that we plug in, range are the values that we come out. And for most of the time, the domain we're talking about are x values, and the range we're talking about are the y values that you cover. Uh, now, some of the few things that we may not have seen in the past are when we're talking about when a function is increasing or decreasing. Now, for in this case, we're talking about uh, as we move from left to right, is the function heading up or heading down? So, as uh, let's just say we move from left to right, the graph, let's just say, goes up. And as we move from left to right, same idea, the graph goes down. So it's the exact idea that most of them would, would think, right? If we're looking at a picture and it looks like kind of like this, we would say kind of on this side of the peak there, the graph is heading up as we move from left to right. And on this side of the peak, as we move from left to right, the graph is going down. So on this side, it is increasing. And on that side, it is uh, decreasing. All right, a few other uh, features of a graph that we may want to talk about are called uh, relative extrema or maxes and minimums. maximum or minimum of a graph. Now again, our intuition uh, does a really good job of uh, understanding what we're talking about here, even though I'm not going to give us some really technical mathematical definitions. But if I were to pick this point right here, kind of the point that's exactly on top of the hill, we would call this a maximum of the graph. Now actually, to be more specific, we call it a relative maximum because maximum generally means the biggest. But as you see, since I added the arrow to this side, this means that this graph goes up forever. So there are places on the graph that are higher than this spot. But this spot right here is higher than all the other points in a little area right around it. So we call it a maximum, or again, more specifically, a relative maximum. Kind of like this spot over here, is smaller than all the other uh, points right there around it. So this would be a minimum. Now again, since this side of the graph goes down forever, it's not the absolute minimum, it's not the absolute smallest spot, it's a relative minimum. Now graphs can have absolute maximums and absolute minimums. I mean, just think about our old friend the parabola, ones we've seen a thousand times, right? It has a minimum value right there, that is a relative minimum because it's lower than all the other points right there around it. But it's also the absolute minimum because there is no other value that is smaller than that on this graph. So for maximum and minimums, generally in this class, we're going to be talking about uh, relative maximums and minimums. But a point whose y value is greater than all the ones, let me give myself a little bit more room here, uh, around it. And for a minimum, a uh, point, let's pull much 
bunch of extra letters in there. A point whose y value is uh, lower or less than, let's just say less than, less than all the uh, ones around it. Now this gets where it gets a little bit tricky and where I'm really not being really mathematically rigorous here because what do we mean around it or in a little neighborhood around it? We just mean basically close to it. So if you think of you're standing on that point, if you look directly to the left and directly to the right of it and you say, okay, uh, are those points higher or lower? Then as long as it fits this, then it's going to be either a maximum or a minimum. One other thing we're going to take a look at on these graphs are the x-intercepts. Now we definitely uh, dealt with x-intercepts before, but we're going to name them slightly differently than we have in the past. Now I'm going to put three words up here that all basically mean the same thing. X-intercepts, uh, uh, let me go ahead and do this. Let's say x-intercepts Those three words, uh, not roots so much, that's maybe an older term and generally only used with polynomials, but still uh, can apply. Generally, if you hear these three things, they mean exactly the same thing. X-intercepts, zeros, we're gonna be using that a lot this semester. X-intercepts, zeros, and roots all mean the same thing, and it's the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. Okay, so let's uh, let's take a look at these and we and talk about what type of answers to expect. The first four things that we have over here, we're talking about over places that things occur at, like the domain, all the x values where it happens. Since we're gonna be talking about regions for like domain and range, where it's going up and where it's going down or increasing, decreasing, we're gonna be getting intervals for when that occurs, which means we're gonna be using interval notation. 99% of the time when we're talking about uh, where something occurs, we're talking about over which X values that thing is happening. So over which X values is the graph increasing, over which X values is the graph decreasing. The only place we don't use X values is the one place when we're talking specifically about Y values, and that would be the range. Now these over here, our maximum, our minimums, and our x-intercepts, zeros or roots, these are all points. So we're gonna be giving exact points for those. All right, so I'm gonna put a picture on the board, and for this picture, we're gonna see if we can go through and state all this information about this graph. All right, let's get all our definitions out of the way and get a nice, easy picture up here. Okay. Here's our axes. Okay, so let's go to right there, 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 and there. All right, so. All right, so if you need to pause to kind of sketch this picture, I completely understand. So hit pause and see that you have it sketched correctly, and then uh, come on back. All right, so let's see what we're going to be looking for. We're going to be looking for domain range, where the graph is increasing, where it is decreasing. Now, there is one more thing that the book uh, may or may not ask you about is where the graph is constant. Well, for constants, it would have to be horizontal, right? Not increasing or decreasing. We don't see a lot of that, but if they do ask for that, it's the same, same kind of idea. All right, uh, what we do have? Increasing, decreasing. Uh, we talk about if we have any maximums, any minimums, and if we have any, uh, let's just go ahead and call them zeros for a change. If we have any zeros for this function. All right, let's start out with domain. The domain is the x values that this graph covers. So how far left does this graph go? 
and all the way over to how far right that it goes. Now notice this graph covers all the x values in the middle. Since it goes to the left forever, the domain is going to start at negative infinity. Since it goes to the right forever, it's going to go to positive infinity. Like always with interval notation, we never include infinities. Now range. Now this is the only time we give an interval that's talking about y values. So what's the smallest y value this graph is going to cover? Well, over here it says it goes down forever. So that means the, the bottom range is negative infinity. How far up does the graph go? Well, this one's going to go up forever. So the range is also negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, where is it increasing? So remember, as we move from left to right, where would you be walking uphill? Now notice if you're walking along the graph, over here you would be walking up, over here you'd be walking down, and over here you would be walking up. So over here, it's increasing. Now remember, when we're talking about where it's increasing or decreasing, we're getting intervals. So this thing is increasing forever, basically, right? It goes that way. So it's going to be from negative infinity all the way over to, what is this? That looks like a negative three is where we kind of hit that peak right there. Okay, so this is uh, something you gotta think about. Now, do we use open or closed circles, or uh, open parentheses or closed parentheses when we are talking about our intervals? Well, infinities always get parentheses. Is this gonna get a closed circle or a closed bracket over here or a parenthesis? Well, think about it like this, an easy way to remember it. If I just put a point on the board all by itself and ask you, is that increasing or decreasing? Say, I don't know, I can't tell, I only have one point. Because at a single point, you cannot be increasing or decreasing. So if I were to do this, don't write this down. If I were to do that, I'm saying that this graph is increasing at the point x equals negative three. It doesn't make sense to be increasing or decreasing at a single point. So for your intervals for increasing and decreasing, you're always gonna be using parentheses. All right, is it increasing anywhere else? Yeah, this part over here is increasing. Where do we start? We start at x equals 1, and it increases forever. Okay, what about decreasing? Well, decreasing is happening kind of here in the middle from, say, negative 3 over to 1. It is uh, decreasing. Okay, so that's talking about everywhere it's increasing, decreasing. Notice this graph is never constant, so we really don't need to talk about that. Does this graph have any maximums? Well, in this case, yeah, it does. This point right here is a maximum. And that point looks like it's the point negative three, two. Now, here's one of the times where maybe our notation in math could be a little bit better because, well, I'm erasing them, I'm gonna put it back, watch. If I were to erase those same things right there, there's no way to tell the difference between these. Are these things points or are they intervals? Well, there's no way to know without context. So in this case, you have to know, uh, this will go back. You have to know that if it says you're decreasing, you know you're talking about an interval, all the x values from negative three to one. If you're talking about a maximum, you're talking about a point. That is the point negative three, two. All right, now <clears throat> notice this is a relative maximum because it is higher than all the points around it, but it's not an absolute because, well, the graph goes up higher than that. For minimums, we do have a minimum that's right here that looks like the point one negative three. Uh, so that's a minimum. Again, uh, that'd be a relative minimum, not the absolute because this thing actually does go down forever. Now zeros, now remember zeros is just a fancy way of saying x-intercepts. Do we have any of those? Well, in this case, it looks like we have one, two, three x-intercepts. So what are those points? It looks like uh, negative four, zero, negative one, zero, and three, zero. All right, so there we go. That gives us a whole lot of information about this picture. So anytime you're given a picture, you should be able to find all these things about it. The domain, the range, where it's increasing and decreasing. Now remember, all those are intervals. Only the range is the interval of one y, though. Uh, <coughs> if it has any maximum, minimums, and zeros. 
Now, again, you might have to throw with the graph this constant in there, but uh, very, very few of them are. All right, I'm going to change the picture here. Let me go ahead and change picture, and I'm going to ask you to, to do the exact same thing that we just did here. Let's say the graph goes Okay, so there's our graph, kind of weird looking. I'm gonna erase our answers for the last one. So do me a favor, hit pause in the video. See if you can sketch this and find all those values out for this. All right, if you're back, let's see how you did. Domain, remember the domain are the X values that the graph covers. Now notice it doesn't have any X values over here. It kind of starts here. So it starts at the X value of negative four but goes on forever. So this goes from negative four to infinity. We never include infinity, but since this is a closed circle over here at x equals negative four, the graph actually exists there. So that would be a square bracket. If this had been, let's say, an open circle there, we would have had to use parentheses because it's not actually uh, there. All right, range. Now here we're talking about y values, remember. So the only time we're ever talking about the y values, what's the smallest y value? Well, the graph doesn't go down forever. It actually, the smallest y value is down here at the y value of negative two, but it does go up forever. So the range is from negative two to infinity. Notice that it actually goes down and touches the y value of negative two. So we're gonna include that, never include an infinity. All right, when is this graph increasing? So imagine yourself walking from left to right along this curve. For this first part, you'd be going downhill or decreasing, but starting right here kind of at our, our, <coughs> excuse me, our y axis, we start walking up. So we're increasing from x equals zero and then forever. So from zero to infinity. Now remember, increasing, decreasing always gets parentheses. Decreasing, we're decreasing at this part of the graph, and that goes from x equals negative four all the way over to zero. So negative four, zero. All right, maximums. Do we have any points that's higher than all the other points around it? Well, yeah, this dot right here, right? That's higher than all the other points around it. And no, it doesn't have points on both sides, but that does, it is higher than all the other points right in the neighborhood. So what point is that? That's the point negative four, two, it looks like. A minimum, yeah, it looks like we have a minimum right here. Uh, and that would be the point x is zero, y is negative two. Oh, negative two. X is zero, y is negative two. Now notice as far as the minimums, they're both of course relative. If it is a maximum or minimum, maximum or minimum is considered a relative maximum or minimum. But this one here for a maximum, it's not the absolute max because the graph goes higher than that. But this would be an absolute minimum because it is lower than any other point on the graph. All right, do we have any x-intercepts or zeros or roots? Yeah, it looks like we have two. Looks like we have one right there and one right there. Those two points are uh, negative three and zero and two, zero. All right, so there we go. That's uh, taking a look at some basic features of a graph. So from, like I said, from a graph, you should be able to find the domain range where it's increasing, decreasing, maybe constant. Uh, any maximum uh, values, or many maximum points, any minimum points, and any zeros or x-intercepts from the picture. Now the graph may also ask, or the book may also ask for y-intercepts. Of course, a y-intercept is anywhere that you cross the y-axis. So being able to interpret a graph like this is really important for stuff that we're going to do in the future. So uh, spend the time to make sure you understand all this.